Because what I'm saying over here, if there's the sun is shining over there, I'm not going to get up and leave the house of bread, come and Judah to go to incest and expect anything but death. Say law. God is already here. I can feel him moving. He's already here. All you have to do is open up your heart. God is already here. Oh, oh, oh. God is already here. I can feel his presence. He's already here. All you have to do is open up your heart. God is already here. Oh, oh, oh. How can they come? They come God was there. I don't care if they say a famine is here. House of bread come a praise. Yeah, famine is here, but house of bread come a pra praise is here. You understand? Jesus on his way to Calvary walked past blind Bartimaeus. And I said that's something. The Bible says a blind Bartimaeus look, uh, he looked like he asked him, he said, Who is that passing by? They said, That's Jesus of Nazareth. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now you know he called him Son of David because it's sort of a spiritual thing. He saw him on a level that other people didn't see him on, see Jesus on. But Jesus to those other people are Jesus of Nazareth. The people that were following him, right? The crowds with him, he was Jesus of Nazareth. Well, when Brian Barnabas sensed that he was there, he called out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now here's the thing I told y'all the only people that do not see light are people that are blind. Because I'm closing my eyes right now and I can point exactly to where my light is. Close your eyes. If you've got the light on, close your eyes and wave your hand real fast in front of your eyes. You see, don't you? The only people that don't see light are blind people. And I don't care what you say. You are, if you are blind, you are blind by choice. You choose it. Because I could be naturally blind but be spiritually full of sight. Before my eyes were operated operate on, I went blind. My eyes just died. I couldn't see light. And yet I still had the light. Paul had just went blind, right? He fell off his horse. He fell off his high horse. And he thought Jesus told him, okay, go there, go to that house. Stay there. You're in the road of the, the road of Damascus, right? Stay there. Stay there. So Jesus told him to go to the house. How do you find his way to the house? You lose your natural sight, but you still have spiritual sight. He was talking to Jesus. He was talking to Jesus. Jesus said, He said, Who are you? We are if I say, Who are you? I'm talking about somebody I see. Who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, the man you persecute. You man you persecute, right? So Paul could see Jesus, Paul could see the light. But naturally, he had gone blind. So how did he get to the house? Ain't no Christian going to come and help him go to Ananias' house. Right? Because they hated him. They, he's Paul. So no Christian would come near him. Ananias was iffy about it. Actually, what's in it? Ananias' house. He's actually another person's house. And Ananias comes to see him. Either way, no Christian would help him. And no normal person would help him. She told him, go to, go, go, go. You on straight street, we're going to get you straight. You was crooked. You is crooked. We're going to get you straight. They said that, that to us growing up. And what they meant was, we're going to get you right. We're going to get you in order. You're all over the place. So we're going to get you straight. We're going to get you straight. Paul was on straight street. He got in the house and Ananias, Ananias, yes, Ananias did come to see him. But Ananias is not carrying the light. I won't know who's in front of me. And it did not happen immediately. It took some time for Ananias to get to him. How did Paul survive? I'm going naturally blind, but I have spiritual sight. Don't mess with me. I keep telling people it was when I lost my sight, went under the knife, came out of it, things changed for me. My life literally changed. I started to see Jesus and the word of God in a completely different way. God told me from that moment, he said, you're going to have a Paul. You have a Samson experience, but you're going to have a come out in a Paul, in a Paul manner. In a Paul manner. 
You have a Samson experience, but you, you have a come out of Paul Manor. This will not kill you. Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus is blind. They saw Jesus. If Bartimaeus being blind still saw Jesus, gets me every time Pastor David says this, we can still miss Jesus. If Bartimaeus was blind and he still saw Jesus, can I miss him? Wouldn't it be a shame for me to miss him? I looked at Harmony, I said, I looked at Dust, I was like, if I, if I, if I get to heaven after all it is, my productivity of my day depends on me doing something for Jesus every second of the day. The landlord just came in, I was talking to her about God. She don't realize it. <laughs> and everything I told Pastor Tim was going to happen, happened. Every second of my day is dependent upon me walking each step out with God. I take one step, and the next step, I'm not praying like over, over my feet as I walk. But each step, if I have a thought that causes me question, what, what keeps me from praying over it? I looked at Pastor Kiseka because Pastor Kiseka just retired. And I said, I'm disabled. You're retired, right? But I said, Harmony goes to work, and she works all day long. That's why she napped like that. She was napping while I was saying it. <laughs> That's why she sleep like that. She worked all day long. Dustin, uh, he's a flight person. He flies. He's a pilot. Pilot, right? So he flies a lot. What keeps me from praying for them? She's like, I do pray, Jamie. I was like, I know you do. But you don't have an opportunity to pray every second of the day like I do. Maybe it's my responsibility to keep you uplifted in prayer. Maybe. My issue is how the incest know what to do and bless didn't. If there was a famine, right, because Elijah called for it over here, there's famine over here, and there's a famine over there, right, because remember um, Naomi was famine in her land. There's a famine in both of these places. Different times, same situation. How do we react to it? How do I respond? How do I respond to famine? I don't know if I'm going to have a place to stay next April. The landlord will be like, uh-uh, Jamie, your house always smells like spray paint and paint. I'm out of here. And you out here too. I want you out. <laughs> I don't know if I have a place to stay. I don't. She was, she was very nice because she said, the piece that you make, Jamie, I, I know you said you want to make me an art piece, the piece that you make, she, I, I think I'm a, I want to put it in the hallway. That's awesome. Like, you know, scary because I don't know if I can make something that good. I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Wait. <laughs> In our famine situation, how do we see it? Do I get irritated? Oh, yes. I get hardcore irritated because I don't understand. As much as I'm going through, I'm sick too right now. So every situation that happens around me, I'm like, ugh, you are getting on my nerves. Everybody gets on my nerves when I'm sick. You get on my nerves. And I look in the mirror like, oh, Jamie, shut up. You get on my nerves. Seriously. I've done it. Lots. I did today. I'm getting my own nerves and my face hurt. My sinuses hurt, so my face hurt. This is winter for me, though. This is winter. This is how the winter goes. This is winter. But even my situation says winter, even my situation says sick, famine, no matter what it is, Ruth had incest plaguing her from one direction, and she had salt plaguing her from another direction, and yet and still she knew exactly what to do. Ruth had to be praying, because Naomi got to the point where she said, do not call me Naomi. Why do you, she said, why do you call me Naomi? Right? They got up one morning and called her Naomi. She said, why do you call me Naomi? Call me Mara, for I am bitter. She let her situation start speaking to her. How does somebody that is incest that would not know how to entreat the God of all nations, right? So we're talking about next to each other. These two women are pictures of Abraham 
and Lot, right? It's the same thing. Uh, Lot had no uh, concept. We don't see any concept of God coming from Lot, uh, right? All we know that he was Sodom and Gomorrah, and then he went up in a mountain, the caves, uh, and his daughters took advantage of him. Uh, we don't see no picture of God coming from him, and yet and still, Ruth was able to lead her line out of slavery. She led the line of Moab out of slavery. I think she re rescued Ammon as well. I think Orpah was supposed to rescue Ammon, but did not. But Ruth did. Because they're brothers. Even in the midst of the famine, we're brothers, right? Related. All it takes is one woman to get on her knees. And that's why Ruth is in a line of, I believe it's in a line of Jesus. It's Ruth, uh, Tamar, uh, Bathsheba, uh, Mary, and the Rahab. Ooh, I got them all. Pastor David would be so, he would be so proud. He'd be so proud. He's the one that got me on that kick. Five women. That was the first question he ever asked me in life. I know he don't remember. I do. I remember, I, I remember basically everything he said to me. Because I hang on to his words like, ugh. One word. What's your word for today? Entreat. What was Pastor David's word a week ago? Sunday. Obedience. He probably doesn't remember. I do. His word for me was obedience. Because I wasn't doing it. That's what I was supposed to do. Obedience, Jamie. Obedience. I can't say to him and treat me not to leave me if I'm not obedient. So it would have been a bad time to say that to him. It would have been a bad time. God said, God said, use your words. But he said, choose your words. <laughs> choose the right time to say them. Use your words, but choose the right time to say them. Don't say and treat me not to leave thee when you are getting on their nerves. Use your words, but choose your words wisely. We're both in a famine, and I take her home to get a uh, rest and get what she need. I pass by trees as I go to glean. I'm going gleaning, right? Bye -bye. I leaning, leaning. No, nope, I ain't going to sit here and lean on you. I'm going gleaning. Because if we lean on each other, we ain't going to get no food. So I'm going gleaning. I'm passing by trees as I go, right? I could pick up sticks, but I don't do that. I pass by trees on, as I go, and I get to the gleaning field. And because the man sees me working so hard, he tells his people to leave me handfuls of meal on purpose. I got a handful of something that I want. To, I got a handful of purpose in me, uh, right? I got a handful. He left me handfuls uh, of meal on purpose. I got meal and I got purpose uh, all at the same time. I was not left with the one and not the other. Right? Because in order for me to fulfill my purpose, Pastor David has to give me meal. He has to give me wheat. He has to give me bread of life. He has to give me the bread, which is Jesus Christ. Even if I have a purpose, and I know my purpose is, let's say my purpose is artistry, right? Even if I have my purpose, and I know what that is, I cannot do art properly if I do not have food in my system. I need food from the man of God. Then I say, okay, I leave there, and I come back and I'll, through the week and I accomplish my purpose, right? But I cannot make it to Romans 8 28 if you do not give me a meal, something to eat. I I need to eat, sweetie. Ruth passed by the sticks and went to the meal. This woman passed by her meal to go get sticks. Say it with me. Tell me something right now. Ruth passed by sticks on the way there. She passed by trees, didn't she? She passed by sticks. Because every, every tree got a stick. Every tree got a branch. Every tree is an opportunity. For, and it's crying out right to you. Kill yourself. Commit suicide. Take part of me. Instead of communing with God, getting the bread and the wine, get some sticks instead of that. Right? Take part in me. Take part of me. She passed by trees on the way to get the, the, the handfuls of meal that waited for her. God had a blessing waiting for her. God has a blessing for you at church waiting for you. He had a blessing at church waiting for me when I got there. That's why I got there. Sick? Yes. But I got there. I went there, sat right, uh-huh, in front of David Lewis, uh-huh, sat there, uh-huh, in front of Pastor David, uh-huh, sat there. Nasty nose. And because I have a sinus infection, I get these weird symptoms. Inside of my nose, Kirk had to give me cream because inside of my nose, a, a knot formed. We still don't know what it was. It was a growth or something. Because I had sinus infection. And my sinuses were literally going crazy. 
I said, Harmony, my nose grew a finger. <laughs> it grew a pinky. The pinkies are jerks. I don't hey, I'm passing by trees on the way to get to church. She said, are you sure you're supposed to be in church? I said, what do you mean supposed to be? I got antibiotics early because I knew this was going to be a problem. Let's go. What you mean, supposed? Espoused? <laughs> you sure you espoused me? Get me there and treat me. And do not leave me home. And treat me. And get me to the household of faith. And treat me. I want to see my dad figure. And Miss Andrea. And treat me to get there. Get me there. <laughs> you the last piece of the Lego. Get me there. You the piece of Lego that's missing between me and church. What's that Lego? Harmony in her car. Get me there. Get me there. Get me there. I want to see a sermon online. I want to see a sermon in my face. I need some food. So with the, I pass by sticks on the way there. You pass by suicide every single day. You have every opportunity to kill yourself. Walking down the stairs, you can just jump down the stairs. I used to try to so hard. Try to kill myself so hard. Try to cut myself, try to jump down the stairs. I try everything. <laughs> I ran into shootouts, through shootouts, whatever. I try everything. I never did that with the intent of killing myself, but I, I tried everything. That was just done because I didn't care. I thought it was funny. I tried everything. I can't tell you how many times I took, I overdosed on Unisom and Tylenol, an extra strength Tylenol. I mean, taking 30 and 40 pills at a time. I wanted the headache to go away, but I also wanted my life to go away, and I didn't tell anybody. I tried everything. We have opportunity, every opportunity to pick up sticks on a way to bread. Every opportunity. If you just make it to where bread is, there's a blessing waiting for you. God has already, in time, placed a crow. Place a Kairos blessing on your Kronos timeline. And all you got to do is live to get it. He gives you life and life more abundantly to fund you to get your blessing. And it is free. Live to get it. Pass by the sticks. Walk by the sticks. Walk by trees and sticks. And she finally got to where Boaz was. She finally got there. Right? She walked by trees and sticks to get the bread. To get the meal. To get to meal. Handfuls of meal. What did the widow at Zarephath do? She had meal in a jar and went to go get sticks. We walk by sticks to go get meal, or we walk by uh, meal to go get sticks. It's up to you, right? But the, here's the thing, right? Your your actions tell me who you are and uh, have your in, ear inclined to. Who is calling you? Sticks or meal? Her meal was set to, not to run out in that jar. Ruth had no jar. They had no food, right? And here's the thing. She had an ephah of wheat, and that's a nice amount, right? But she still had to go keep, uh, blah, 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 go keep and glean, right? Or get, right? She could not just depend on that. God made a way for the widow at Zarephath. But the thing is, she never saw it because she never let the meal run out. She's supposed to. You have to let it run out, right? Ruth got her meal, and that was a blessing, right? Because Boaz gave her the blessing, right? Boaz gave her the blessing of meal, right? But the widow at Zarephath had the miracle of meal. You don't realize it, but sometimes God will put something before you, and because you do not see it's a spiritual leap for what is is in front of you, you will think it is a miracle when it's a blessing. You will call a miracle a blessing, you call a blessing a miracle, and you cannot do that, ever, because what you will do is you will dry your blessing out. If I call my blessing, right, a miracle, I am walking in the barren. Because here's the thing, here's the thing, I'm looking at it and words have created power, right? So if I call, thank you God for this miracle, you gave me a miracle, you gave me a miracle. Things have to shut down around me once I start praying like that. Give me a miracle, I used to pray like that, don't do that, right? Give me a miracle, right? Because you got to ask yourself, what do you need a miracle for? Give me a miracle, give me something, God, a miracle, I want to see you work out something, or I could not have worked it out myself. Give me a miracle, God. And then but if God steps in and does a miracle in front of you, you are going to pay something for it. 
a perfect example is this a particular um, instance. Elijah, right, uh, he called down famine. That is a miracle he made, right? Because he had to, he, in his mind, he had to do it. He had to create barrenness. Famine is barrenness. Drought is barrenness. He had to create desolation for a miracle to take place, right? So he assumed that the way to do it was to call for a famine. But if you call for a famine, you are calling for emptiness, right? So she had a jar in her house and she did not realize all you got to do is use what you got. God said, I gave you enough. I gave you the measure of faith. She had a measure of meal in the jar. If she had used what was in the jar, the jar would have filled up again. It was not to be empty. Why? Because the blessing that Elijah was bringing her said that her jar would not ever run out during while they were in a famine. Her jar would not run out. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, her jar, right? She had, mm, she had meal. I don't care how much you got. Use it. God cannot use you to bless anybody. You want to be a blessing? Be the blessing. God cannot use you to be a blessing to anybody if you do not use what he's giving you. You know what I'm talking about? about my uh, art piece? I forgot all about it. So I'm going to do is pray over, the, pray over that canvas and give it to him. I'm praying for museum showings and different things like that. I'm actually just praying for God to have his way. I don't care what he does. But God having his way may be me, me, me just giving her a piece or a piece. Why not? I'm still showing. Ooh. No matter what happens, no matter whether a woman is having a girl or a boy, she could be having twins. She could be 20 pounds, she could be 220 pounds. When she's pregnant, she's showing. When a blessing is coming forth, you're showing. If there's a baby inside of you, you're showing. She's pregnant. You will never bring forth a blessing without showing. People will know it. People will see it. The people that see in the spirit, you find somebody that's really, I'm telling you guys, find somebody that's evil. You find somebody, find somebody that attacks you, that does things to attack you, or just, I don't know, it just like does evil things. I'm telling you, find somebody like that. Demons tell on themselves. You know who got discernment? Demons and angels. People that are, people are angelic and people that are demonic. You want to know what God's doing in, in this season? Find a demon. Listen, hear what they hear what they say, and then flip it. Is that what, what happened with Gideon? Gideon's about to go fight them people, and he got nervous. So the angel told me, he "said If you're nervous, go down there and listen to, see what you hear." And so he went down there, heard them, listen to those men, and the man said, "I had a dream about a barley loaf, and it came tumbling through this town." I said, "Obviously, the the, the, the man of God." But he didn't realize he was only going to do it with the word of God. He was going to do it with word and not sword. Because this barley loaf, is you, if you see bread, you're going to do it with your mouth and not your hands. And the barley is such a huge real ghetto. It's barley. It's like, it's bread that's like dark, it, it, it's dirty, nobody wants it. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's not the prime roll. Like it's not like up on a high echelon of, of wheat. It's not, it's not great bread, it's wonder bread, that's what it is. I wonder how you can call barley bread wonder bread, or I wonder how you call wonder bread bread. You know, either way, no matter what we call it, it's the bread. Well, the man said, I saw, I had a dream last night, and I saw a piece of barley loaf come in and smashed everything, just killed everybody, killed everything. And his friend says, Oh, that's Gideon. God's going to use Gideon to do that. Now, here's the thing these two men were from the enemy town, they were not from their town. So this man interpreted this man's dream. In favor of Gideon. And they had nothing to do with the Israelites. They were against them. And they were not on God's side. So God used those men to speak into Gideon. Just like God used uh, 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 Ahasuerus to bless Mordecai through Haman's hands. God will use your enemy to, enemy, enemy to bless you. Listen to what your enemies are saying about you. They'll tell you what God is doing in, in your life. They'll show you too. It's a blessing. It's always a blessing. 
But make sure you, when, you, when you're walking, right, you don't want to walk past bread to go get sticks. Because we do it. She, she saw it, and we, we, we do it. Crystal used to do it, too. Crystal, we, we would get snacks from my grandmother, so me and Lou, we would tear stuff up. Crystal, oh, uh, she's so bougie. Crystal would look at stuff, and she holds on to it, and she would nurse it. And then she'd sit there and wait for everybody else to eat theirs, and then she'd just kind of like play with hers and kind of like eat us real slow. And I'm like, Chris, you don't really want it. Just give it to us. No, this is mine. I want this for me. That's nice. But she nursed it to hold on to it. She didn't nurse it because she needed to. The woman with the, from the widow of Zarephath, she nursed that wheat, that, not the meal in the jar. She nursed it. She worshipped it. How do I know she worshipped it? Because it says she had oil in the cruise, meal in a jar, and then she went to go get sticks. If you are hungry, you use the meal for what it's used, supposed to be used for. You don't look, put it in the jar and keep it up on a stanchion. It's like Joseph's technicolor, multicolor coat, Gideon's golden fleece, and uh, the slapping Bible. Men slapping Bible with Jesus' big hands on his big fingers. Lois had all of that, all her stuff, and she had like a jar of oil. That she never used. All that stuff had dust. That Bible we could not touch. When is it okay to make an idol out of your Bible? I was upset because I started looking for um, a, another copy of my Bible because my Bible is falling apart. The pages are literally just coming out of it. My Bible is like, I'm tired. Because I take the Bible everywhere. And it's small. I love it. So I started looking for a rendition of this Bible. I bought a bigger Bible. Stephen and Christina bought me a Bible. I don't. I, I, I want this Bible. Like I want a smaller Bible that I can carry everywhere. Your Bible should be giving up on life. Like my Bible is literally giving up. It's tired. It's giving up. It's giving up on life. It's like oh, can't do it no more. Oh. I said, Christina, do you know how to restore a book? She was like, only um, the books, like small books and stuff like that. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking. I'm thinking about trying to restore it myself and just kind of like. Put the thing back together myself, but it's hard. I don't. I don't know. Your Bible should be ready to give up, because <laughs> you take it everywhere with you. If your Bible looks brand new, mm -mm. if you got meal in a jar and it's sitting on a counter, and you walk past the meal in the jar, that that meal in, in the jar is idle, because you don't know what's going to happen if you eat that meal in the jar. How about forget about the sticks? Eat the meal and see what happens. Eat your meal. Eat the meal God has before you. Stop complaining about it. She started writing the good to God, dear God, it's me, Sally. Blah, 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 blah. Complaining, crying, blah, 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 blah. Word, 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 mouth, 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 a son in there crying. Y'all upset, but you never tried the meal. He said, prepare the table before you in the presence of your enemies, but he will not feed you and put inside your mouth the meal. If you can eat, go get the meal. He put it there for you. You're crying about being hungry and there's meal on your counter. Ruth went to go glean. She walked past sticks to go get meal. You got meal in your house and you walk past the meal to go get sticks. I don't get it. 